If you can't hear me, just move up a little bit. Um, and I'm not yelling at you, I'm just talking loudly. That's what I tell the kids on my team. Um, so the first thing uh, that I have to do is thank everybody here for choosing Brockton Track Club. Um, <laughs> we, know, um, we know that you have so many options uh, on how to spend your hard-earned money and things that you can do with your kids. And it means a lot that you choose to trust us and to uh, run with us and to be a part of this family because uh, we think that it's more than just a track club. You know, it's definitely something where our high school kids to our adult volunteers, everyone wants to give back and not just make uh, track something that people are getting better at, but just life and being responsible adults. So um, thank you again for that. Um, I have to always thank my wife first and foremost, uh, <laughs> Amanda. Um, last year, the first year of the program, when I was just an idea that we were gonna do this, it was like, well, we might have like 50 kids. I'll be out, you know, one night a week, two nights a week tops, but it won't be much. And obviously it's grown to be a lot more than that. And her support means that I can keep doing this. Uh, and it means everything that you support everything I do. And I know the kids and the parents uh, thank you too because it's a great, great thing that we do. Um, what I like to do at the beginning is have the kids thank their parents uh, because I don't think that you realize how hard it is for your parents sometimes to rush out of work, get your clothes ready, wash your red t-shirt every night before you come. Uh, and I know sometimes it's taken for granted. So if you just take a minute, find your parent, give them a hug, say thank you. Alana, that means you too. Go give mama a hug. No, mama does the laundry. But mama does the laundry. Go give her a hug and kiss. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the other reasons that we're able to do this is because we have just incredible support from City Hall, from Brockton Public Schools, uh, together combined. Uh, I can't even imagine how we'd be able to do this without the support of Mayor Bill Carpenter, Kathy Smith uh, at the Brockton Public Schools. They just really work together in different ways, but together they make this happen. Uh, and I still remember the first time I saw Bill, um, we were at, I think, a school committee meeting three years ago, and I had just kind of said, hey, this is something I thought we, we might be, be able to do. And he didn't even flinch. He just said, yep, let's do it. Make it happen. And I was like, really? Oh, all right. I guess it's happening now. <laughs> so I started getting to work. Uh, and they've just been supportive with giving us the stadium and opening up the bathrooms uh, and helping us work with Brockton After Dark. Uh, and we are the largest youth track club in New England not just Massachusetts. Uh, one of the reasons for that is because we do get that cooperation. There are some track clubs, and I talked to these coaches, they've got 30, 40 kids, and they're charging $300, $400 for less than what we offer for maybe a month, one day a week. Um, and it's because they have to pay for police details and they have to, they get charged rental fees for the stadiums. Um, they have to rent porta potties. And I don't think the coaches even realize that when we don't have to take on those costs, we're able to funnel the money back to you. We're giving out over $11,000 in scholarships tonight to our volunteer coaches. Uh, Every little P 
piece of money, every coin that we can save can go back to you. And I know that you'll use it wisely um, because you're smart kids and you know that your future is important. So um, that being said, I'd like to bring up Mayor Bill Carpenter to say a few words. <clears throat> I've got to say, nowadays, about the only running I do is to the dinner table, I think, so. But I'll still, ta I'll still take the medal, though. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll just be very brief. I just, I, I love this program. I love what it's doing. I, I love how quickly it's grown in just a couple of years. Um, I suppose I should probably start by thanking Coach Fidalgo's wife also. So... Because I know that uh, this is a great team effort, but this, this program would not be here, would not run the way it does if, if not for his efforts. Um, you know, Brockton's got a great tradition of track uh, for a long time. But this club is about, you know, a lot more than just that. I know a lot of the participants will go on to be outstanding track athletes at high school, but this is just about so much more. So whether it's uh, student athletes that are playing other sports that will improve their performance by participating in track, but I think it's just also about all of the other lessons that are learned uh, by being in the track club and uh, whether it's discipline or goal setting or making a commitment to be part of this, uh, there is just uh, so many positives to be gained uh, by participating in this. So for the the families that are out there, thank you for getting your children here to the program. Uh, for the, all of the coaches and volunteers and everyone that, come out, that comes out to uh, work with our young student athletes, thank you very much for what you contribute to the program. And to everyone that participated this year, congratulations. We'll look forward to another great year next year. Thank you. I'd also like to just quickly thank a few people that couldn't be here tonight, but they are very instrumental in supporting our program. Kathy Smith, the superintendent of schools. Mike Thomas, deputy superintendent. Jerry Cassidy. Matt Campbell, who you guys uh, saw, he was one of our coaches that was down there every single night volunteering his time. He's in Disney riding the Dumbo ride right now. So, <laughs> uh, and Brett Gormley uh, on the school committee. Um, just really supportive from the day one and some of the things that they do aren't necessarily track related some of it's just support that we need here and there to make sure that we have the dates we need to have places to, that we need uh, <clears throat> and it is really important uh, to have support at all different levels um, the next thing we're going to do is give out some community service awards um, each year we recognize some people who don't have kids in the program but they're out there helping uh, support what we do because they love the program, because they love the kids. Uh, this year we actually have a couple of college graduates who were coaches last year as high school students that came back this year as college students and they, they still are helping out, giving us all they can. So when I call them up, give them a nice round of applause and then we'll get a nice picture of them. Uh, Debbie McNulty. Patty Conley. Stay up here for a picture. Uh, Reggie Hector, who couldn't be here, but Reggie has been great this year. Angela Grodier, who's behind me. Angela. Chris McCaffrey. <laughs> Hanson, Hanson, I'm not sure if he made it, but Hanson has been great this whole year. 
Jailson Silva. I don't know if Jailson, I don't know if he made it. He has a new baby, so he gets excused. And so let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> so a few stats from the, the program this summer. We had 381 registered athletes. That's 55 more than last year. Incredible. We had 116 coaches volunteer uh, we were having about 60 or 70 per night, but over the course of the season, we had 116 different high school students come over to the track and volunteer their time. And I know that as some of these uh, children get older and graduate out of track club, hopefully they end up becoming the coaches of this program. You know, that's kind of how it works. So we have a few eighth graders that I know next year will be coaches for the first year, which is pretty cool to start off as an athlete in the program and end up as a coach in the program down the road. Okay. Um, we gave out 25 scholarships to uh, people who really needed help. Uh, and we don't recognize them uh, because they don't want to be put on a pedestal or said that they, they needed help. But there were some phone calls to us throughout the year from places like DCF, different elementary schools, middle schools, guidance counselors, and they said, I have kids that you know, could really use this, but they don't have the money. And you know, we were able to make sure that they could be a part of this no matter what. Uh, and that was really important. So thank you. And then I mentioned the number before, but we are giving out $11,600 in scholarships to our volunteer coaches. Okay, we have a few different awards tonight that are a little bit different and we'll do these quickly. Um, the first one, we're going to be giving out a Boxer of the Year award this year uh, to two different people. Hopefully they're both here. Uh, the first one is RJ Chapman. Is RJ here yet? RJ is here. Clap it up. Where's uh, Archie? So you might uh, notice he looks a little different tonight because he doesn't have the wheelchair with him, but RJ's been one of the most courageous young men. <laughs> Our second uh, boxer of the year is Susan Takang. So some of you may have seen Susan's picture in the paper because uh, she is one of the best hurdlers in the state of Massachusetts. <clears throat> um, you also may have noticed at the beginning of track club she had a boot on her foot in the concession stand. She tore her Achilles uh, halfway through her sophomore season. Uh, 
anytime an athlete gets injured, it's really hard to recover. And when it's an Achilles, it's just an incredible amount of recovery. She's walking great now, but she's probably got another six months uh, of work ahead of her. And the support from all the coaches and being around the track is going to help her get back. So. All right, we also have uh, some Coaches of the Year awards, and this is kind of like kids' choice uh, because we've got some coaches that we've gotten emails about, parents have raved about them, and it doesn't mean they're the best coaches. We have so many good coaches in the program, but you know, when you make an impression on kids and parents, um, you know, I think you should be recognized. So a few coaches that I want to recognize real quick. Maisha Moniz. Sancho Alexis. Ariana Abreu. Talma Takang. Archie Winodi. Isaiah Laguerre. <laughs> Joe Asari. <laughs> Joseph. Joseph. And last but not least, I have to say this is. Uh, no surprise because I, I think if, if there was one more email about this kid, I was going to have to give him you know, my job because uh, he's done such a great job and made such a great impression on the kids. But also his picture's been in the paper so many times for track that you know, it's really tough to find kids that are great on the track but great human beings. And I don't think that people realize sometimes the people that are really good at track don't always represent the best of Brockton when they leave here. This is not going to be the case with this kid. He's going to be a superstar person, superstar athlete, and you're really, really lucky your kids get coached by him. Jordan Williams! All right, this time I'm going to have all the coaches come up at the same time. Come up here, guys, and let's recognize all the coaches while they're on stage. We'll get a nice group picture. Almost, hold it back. I was going to cry, but I want to do it. Yeah, no, I saw it. I was like, <laughs> Ted, and Ted's here. I don't cry. I can't cry. Slide down. We need a nice picture. Slide down and move in like the front. Slide down. Make like a second row in front.
while we call the kids up to get their medals, okay? So you can stay down here. Because when they come on the stage, I don't want them stage diving off. Reggie! Yeah, you can help pass out the medals as we get uh, to that point. Yeah, I got you. <clears throat> and now that you're here, now that you're here, Reggie, I can make the big announcement. Where's uh, Chris? Chris is on the ground. Chris. Oh, he's right there. Okay, so one more, one more announcement. Then we're gonna really start getting this thing going and get the kids their medals. So when I started this program. The first thing that was on my mind was I really wanted the kids and the coaches, I wanted it to be theirs. Um, there's so many youth sports programs that are just run by parents and not that we don't care, sometimes it's that we care too much and we get narrow-sided and we don't really see the big picture. So in this program it was always important to me that the high school kids are the ones that are really taking charge of it. And this year we had three incredible upperclassmen, college uh, students that really showed that they wanted this to be something more than just what it is and they want to contribute more. So we are adding Chris McCaffrey, Reggie Hector, and Angela Grodier to the board of directors of this nonprofit. So they'll be, uh, they'll be involved in all the decision making with us next year and we're going to start, hopefully after next year, there'll be even more. Um, but we want to make this something where you can start off as an athlete, as a five-year-old athlete in this program and end up as someone that's on the board of directors of a nonprofit. And that's an incredible journey to go through. Uh, and I know that we have some kids that'll end up doing that. You know over their lifetime in the program. Okay, so we'll always start with the youngest because I know they're so anxious to get up there. So let's start with five and six girls. You come right up on stage. Don't, leave, don't let them leave the stage yet, okay? Can you guys Since we're on TV, should I leave this up here and see if Dunkin' Donuts will sponsor us next year? I'll leave that up there. <laughs> Five and six, boys, come up on these stairs over here.
I said 6.45 and 6.46. I'm sorry for keeping you an extra minute. Olivia, we're always on time. <laughs> um, thank you for another great year. If you have a chance, make sure you thank the coaches, thank the volunteers. Um, one thing, coaches, if you leave with anything from this program, okay, Community sports, youth sports, they're struggling right now. The reason that it survives here is because we're willing to give the time. It's not always about money. Money, we need it. But you can't have money and have people that don't want to put the time in so that the kids can get what they need. These coaches, even though they're getting scholarships tonight, okay, they are not even making close. These scholarships are not paying for college. It's a couple hundred dollars that might buy them a few books, get them into a track camp, get them a pair of spikes, get them to a movie. I don't know. But this isn't getting them to college, and they definitely could have made a lot more hourly working at Dairy Queen or somewhere else. But they chose to be here. They chose to work and put in the time so that this community so that these kids can have something that they feel is important. And I know the coaches won't ever say it, but a lot of you have grown up a lot, especially some of you that have done this for two years. Some of you were wild childs. Like, you know, you weren't people that I would say, I want my kids around all the time. <laughs> some of you. And some of you, some of you and most of you have grown up a lot 
and you've surprised me, you've surprised a lot of the adults. Some of you have surprised your parents because you've been great leaders, you've been great role models, and sometimes I think people don't give kids enough credit nowadays that if you give them the responsibility and you put some pressure on them to be responsible, they'll do it. You don't always have to hold their hands and make it easy for them because we made it hard for them. We said, Jordan, here's 25 five-year-olds, figure it out. And he did it. And other coaches figured it out too. And the more that they're around the kids, the more they start to get better as human beings because they start to realize their responsibility to be good people and to be good role models in the city of Brockton. They are around. You guys see them doing something bad. Make sure you email me because these guys, the job doesn't end here. Coaches, these kids recognize you everywhere now. Some of you have been out, you've told me, you've been out and kids have come up to you and like tugged at your shirt. Like, hey coach, coach. You know, so, you know, you're a role model, not just at the track, but everywhere in Brockton. Everything you do, you have a responsibility to make sure that this next generation comes up and has as good as you do, okay? So, thanks to everybody for another great year.